the designs of his heart from age to age to rescue their souls from death and to keep them alive in famine. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. Brothers and sisters, we are offering this Holy Mass in honor of the most sacred heart of the Lord Jesus to pray for the intention of Shay Shebani. Let us now acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Clothe us, Lord God, with the virtues of the heart of your Son, and set us aflame with his love that conform to his image, we may merit to share in eternal redemption. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Reading from the book of Genesis. The span of Sarah's life was 127 years. She died in Kirabiah, that is Hebron, in the land of Canaan. And Abraham performed the customary morning rites for her. Then he left the side of his dead one and addressed the Hittites. Although I am a resident alien among you, Sell me from your blown holdings a piece of property for a burial ground that I may bury my dead wife. After the transaction, Abraham buried his wife, Sarah, in the cave of the field of Machpelia, facing Mamre, that is Hebron, in the land of Canaan. Abram had now reached a ripe old age, and the Lord had blessed him in every way. Abraham said to the senior servant of his household, who had charge of all his possessions, put your hand under my girth, and I will make you swear by the Lord, the God of heaven and God of earth, that you will not procure a wife for my son from the daughters of the Canaanites among whom I live, but that you will go to my own land and to my kindred to get a wife for my son, Isaac. The servant asked him, what if the woman is unwilling to follow me to this land? Should I take your son back to the land from which you migrated? Never take my son back there for any reason, Abraham told him. The Lord, the God of heaven, who took me from my father's house and the land of my kin, and who confirmed by oath promise he made to me. I will give you this land to your descendants. He will send his messenger before you, and you will obtain a wife for my son there. If the woman is unwilling to go follow you, you will be released from his oath, but never take my son back there. A long time later, Isaac went to live in the region of Nekab. One day, toward the evening, he went out in the field, and as he looked around, he noticed the camels were approaching. Rebecca, too, was looking about, and when she saw him, she alighted from her candle and asked the servant, who is the man out there walking through the fields towards us? That is my master, replied the servant. 
Then she covered herself with her veil. The servant recounted to Isaac all the things he had done. Then Isaac took Rebekah into his tent. He married her, and thus she became his wife. In his love for her, Isaac found solace after the death of his mother, Sarah. The word of the Lord. The responsorial psalm is give thanks to the Lord for he is good. Give thanks to the Lord for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. Who can tell the mighty deeds of the Lord or proclaim all his praises? Blessed are they who observe what is right, who is always what is just. Remember us, O Lord, as you favor your people. Visit me with your saving help, that I may see the prosperity of your chosen ones. Rejoice in the joy of your people, and glory with your inheritance. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Come to me, O you who labor and are burdened, and I will give you rest, says the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. As Jesus passed by, he saw a man named Matthew sitting in the customs post. He said to him, follow me. And he got up and followed him. While he was at table at his house, Many tax collectors and sinners came and sat with Jesus and his disciples. The Pharisees saw this and said to his disciples, Why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? He heard this and said, Those who are well do not need a physician, but the sick do. Go and learn the meaning of the words, I desire mercy, not sacrifice. I did not come to call the righteous, but sinners. The Gospel of the Lord. Three friends when fishing, the Lord walked across the water to them and got into the boat. They rejoiced to see the Lord. The Lord asked them, have you caught anything? And they said, not yet. And one of them spoke up and said, Lord, don't mind about a fish. Um, if you could help us, because he knew that the Lord would tell him, would tell them to put the, uh, to cast their lines on the right side of the boat to catch fish. So he spoke up uh, before the Lord said that. He said, Lord, we are here not for the fish, but we're here because we're depressed. He said, how come? And he said, um, I've uh, been living in pain, pain in my bones, pain in my nerves all over the, my body. I have to use a walker because I couldn't walk. It's too painful. And could you heal me? And the Lord said, yes, of course. 
So he took his walker, he threw into the water. And as soon as the walker touched the water, he was healed. And he, um, he rejoiced, he jumped up and down like a little kid and said, Lord, I don't feel pain anymore. My pain is gone. Thank you, Lord. And his second friend said, Lord, me too. And uh, he said, I have uh, such a bad uh, vision, eyesight, that no optometrist could help me. Uh, my glasses get too heavy, and I couldn't see anything anymore. And the Lord said, no problem. He, so he took his glasses and threw the water. And as soon as they touched the water, the, the guy could see clearly. He could see uh, the water, the, uh, the shores, the woods, the mountain, the sky, clouds, everything so clear and beautiful. And he was so happy and said, Lord, I could see everything clearly. Thank you so much. And, um, and then the Lord turned to the third guy and said, how about you? What can I do for you? And, and he said, uh, no, thank you. Don't touch me. Please, don't touch me. And the other two friends said, Lord, help him because he has a lot of problem. And, uh, and, and the third friend said, please don't touch me. And said, so the Lord asked, how come? And he said that I'm receiving uh, disability. <laughs> it's, um, certainly, it's a, it's a funny story, but, but the Lord uses our sickness to symbolize our sinfulness. As the Lord said, um, only the sick need a physician. And so he came to heal our bodies, but that is to, to symbolize his primary mission to give us redemption, salvation, the health of our soul. And a lot of time, we find it very hard to overcome our sins, despise all the graces the Lord give us, because we find it hard to let go the benefits of our sins. And we, we would not let those go. And that is why we keep struggling with the same sins. And so we are called to let those go, to value more our salvation than whatever benefits that we can glean from our sins. And in the gospel today, the Pharisees mentioned the scandal of, teach, of eating with sinners, but the Lord pointed out the real scandal. The real scandal is to make excuses for sins. The Lord said, I did not come to call the righteous, but sinners. Righteousness in the gospel today refers to those who do not consider themselves to be sinners, meaning they do not want to let go their sins. So they went ahead to excuse for their sins, come up with all kinds of reasoning to justify their sins as if they do not have any. That is the righteousness of the world. Sometimes they even glorify their sins, pretending that it's not sin at all. And one good example is the pride movement. We just um, had the pride month. It is one good example. They knew they had problems, but either they do not think they are able to overcome them or they do not want to overcome them. So they excuse them and even glorify them. Another good example is a hot topic uh, in discussions today about giving communion to 
prominent Catholic politicians who support abortion. So we have um, well-known uh, cases like Mr. Biden, Mrs. Pelosi, prominent Catholics, and yet absolutely support abortion with all their heart, their mind, their soul. And in fact, their great power and high state of status are built on their absolute support for abortion. They know what is wrong, but it's not easy. It's very hard because what is at stake here is tremendous benefit, tremendous power. The bishops are discussing about giving communion to them. And uh, we need to separate two issues. One is about the receiver of communion. And one is the giver or the distributor of Holy Communion. And uh, about the first, we are taught earlier on, and as the teaching is very clear, if we have mortal sins, uh, we are not to receive, we are not to present ourselves for communion. So even small kids could know that. So that's not a, a, a discussion anymore. It is very clear. And yet, these politicians know the, the communion, if they don't come to communion, it could compromise their high power. So they make all kinds of excuses, especially recourse to their conscience and um, about 20 Congress members uh, wrote a letter, a public letter to the Bishop Conference about respecting their conscience. And one even dared to challenge the church about it. Um, Mr. Ted Liu from Los Angeles, uh, I didn't know he was Catholic, but um, they said he's Catholic. And he said he dared the church denying him of communion. And, um, and so it is, I think the scandal is that they support abortion, but I think there's another scandal that they make excuses for their sins and even glorify it and, um, and that's another scandal. Just like those, the Pharisees in the gospel today, they don't consider themselves to be sinners. They are righteous and demand others to respect their righteousness. And so that's, that is a problem. Even the teachings of the church are very clear about receiving communion. There's a separate issue is um, giving communion. The ministers of communion, the bishops, the, the priests, deacons, or lay ministers, the question they're now discussing is whether to deny uh, those who do not, uh, they're not supposed to receive communion. And the teachings of the church in this area, again, are very clear. The ministers are to deny communion to them. Uh, we do this all the time. When someone come up for communion, we know that they're not Catholics. What do we do? We don't give them communion. Right? And we are obligated to deny them communion. It's an obligation. Or some little kids, you know, we have, we have kids that come up for communion. 
and they open their mouth, they stick their tongues out, but we know that they have not made First Communion, what do we do? We give them the blessings instead. And this is obligated the ministers to do it. We are obligated to protect the sacrament, and we are obligated to protect the salvation of the, those people who come up for communion. If we know them, they're not supposed to get communion. And it's required of ministers, and, and the ministers know well we train our ministers this way, just like we train our young Catholics from religious education not to come up for communion if we have mortal sin. And we train our ministers not to give communion if we know they're not supposed to. And the ministers who are not able to do that would need to refrain from distribution of communion if they are not able to defend, protect the sacrament, and protect the salvation of those who come up for communion. Practicing or observing the word St. Paul, that if we receive communion unworthily, we receive condemnation unto ourselves. And the teaching is very clear. And yet, the bishops are still discussing about it, whether to give communion or to deny communion. There's nothing to discuss. But why do they discuss? Because of the benefit, tremendous benefit. What kind of benefit? We can look up, figure it out, but, but those politicians, the power they have, all the advantage, or the leverage they have, those are tremendous benefits. And if the bishops deny them communion, it is to undermine those politicians and lend support to their opponents. And some of the bishops do not want to do that. It is very hard Just like in the story, you know. They know what is right to do and what is wrong to avoid, but it's not easy to do. That's why these politicians, a lot of times they say, personally they pro-life, but publicly they support so-and-so and this and that policy. Because they know what is right and wrong. But it's too hard for them to avoid what is wrong and pursue what is right. So we need to pray for them. And we are grateful that we are just common folks. When we deal with our sins, we deal with smaller, much smaller benefits. Much easier for us to let go of those benefits. Much easier for us to avoid what is wrong and pursue what is right. And so let us pray for our prominent fellow Catholics that they have the grace to let go of the benefits and to avoid the wrong that they know full well and to pursue the right that they know full well and pray for our bishops and all of their salvation will be at stake simply because of the high sta status they possess. That is tremendous benefits that they have to let go. So pray for our church, pray our, for, our, uh, for our fellow Catholics, especially those prominent, and pray for our bishops, for priests, and pray for ourselves too, that we all heed the Lord's call for repentance and the freedom that he offers following his healing. If we just let go the benefits that are enslaving us to sins and receive healing and receive the freedom of the children of God.
We are celebrating the Independence Day this weekend. We give thanks to God for the freedom we enjoy. It is thanks to the blood of so many people, the sacrifice of generations to defend and build up this, these freedoms. But we are also grateful to God for the freedom from sins and the devil and death. Thanks to the blood of Christ, but it entails us to let go the benefits of sin to enjoy that freedom. We have first a Friday collection, so go ahead. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O oh God, Father of mercies, who, because of the great love with which you loved us, with untold goodness gave us your only begotten Son, Grant, we pray, that being perfectly united with him, we may offer you worthy homage through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For raised up high on the cross, he gave himself up for us with a wonderful love and poured out blood and water from his pierced side, the wellspring of the church's sacraments, so that one over to the open heart of the Savior all might draw water joyfully from the springs of salvation. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed, holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. 
at the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion. He took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was sended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church is spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, and Kevin, our Bishop, his assistants, bishops, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, his spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. 
graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Thus says the Lord, let whoever is thirsty come to me and drink. Streams of living water will flow from within the one who believes in me. When you come up for communion, please notice that you have um, two kneelers on the left side and two kneelers on the right side. So please occupy, uh, so come to the kneelers that, that are free. Um, that unoccupied so that we can uh, move the communion uh, along. Thank you.
Let us pray. Made partakers in the sacrament of charity, we humbly implore your mercy, Lord, that we may be conformed to Christ on earth and merit to be co-heirs of his glory in heaven, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Saint Michael, the archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and the snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace.